use jewels and I don't post YouTube videos but for whatever reason I wanted to film this one and I'm gonna be talking about how to get a 5 on the AP art exam or at least how to kind of you know how to do your best to getting a 5 on the AP art exam I'm 18 years old I'm going into college you know in like three weeks so <laughs> That'll be fun. I am going to art school. And my entire senior year, I took AP art. I was so excited to take it. And I got my scores back in July, and I got a five. So I figure I could give you some really good insight on steps that you can take to kind of ensure you're going to get a better score. When you take your AP art exam, you have three parts. You have your breath, your concentration, and your quality. So first off, we're going to talk about your concentration. Your concentration is essentially a theme. It's kind of what all of your pieces have in common. It's a collection and they're all under one main idea. Right? Easy enough. And you're gonna have 12 of those. And then you have your breath, which are 12 pieces that show your skills as an artist that don't fit into your concentrated areas. So you can draw anything that you wanted to draw that you didn't get the opportunity to draw for your concentrated area and you can really have a lot of fun with your breath section and then your last section is your quality your quality are five pieces that you mail in to the college board so i guess i should start off this video with my pieces um i'm not going to show you all of my pieces but i will show you my five quality pieces so you're gonna mail in this portfolio and all of your pieces have to fit in here so I had to cut down some of the mats pretty small actually I think it was just for one of them I don't know how well these are gonna show up when I hold them this is one of the pieces I sent in it's just of a skeleton it's an observational skeleton drawing that I did my junior year it's in Prismacolor pencils The next one I have in here is this pen and gouache drawing, and this was part of my breath, and the other one was also part of my breath. This one was actually the quickest one that I did. It's another Prisma, and it's just of some grapefruit. Real cute, right? I sent in this acrylic painting of myself and it really has a lot of different colors in there I kind of look like a zombie um, a lot of professors liked this during portfolio day and during any of the portfolio reviews that I had I really like the paper that it's on it's on an acrylic paper opposed to just Bristol board And then the last one I have is the only concentration piece that I sent in. This is my favorite piece that I did all year, so if you're underwhelmed by it, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about the, the lighting in the way. It is a pen and gouache, and yeah, it took me forever to do. I actually sent that one in as two different pieces because of all of the detail and everything within it. Although it doesn't look like it would take a long time, it takes such a long time to work with gouache the way that I do. And then also, I figured I would show you this piece because this is a really unique piece and I am missing a very obvious spot that fell off. But, <laughs> I don't have enough space. Okay. This is a self-portrait I did. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's a holographic background. I'm kind of moving it in hopes that you'll be able to see it. And you know, this really just demonstrates a bit of my creativity. I didn't send that one in, like I said, because I felt like it was too fragile to mail to the college board. Okay. 
So I just showed you my five quality pieces and I will also link my portfolio down below if you want to see some of the other pieces that I created and that were in my college book portfolio because I don't know how long this video is going to be and I don't know if I can insert photos of everything else, but if I do have the time, <laughs> I'll insert some more photos of everything I did. My concentrated area was teens throughout the decades, evolving with technology in environments, and it started from the year 1969 to modern times. And the reason why I started with 1969 was because that was a bit more tangible. I didn't do the 1930s because an 18 year old from the 1930s will probably be married with a child, you know what I mean? compared to someone in the 70s. They were just chilling out, listening to some music, all that fun stuff. Also, my mom grew up in the 70s, so it definitely felt, I felt more of a connection with that. A lot of mine were done in gouache. Half of them were done in gouache, which if you don't know what gouache is, it's kind of like a watercolor, but more pigmented. And then some of them were done on the computer, some of them were mixed media, where I started off with gouache and I messed up the gouache to no return, so then I put it on the computer. Um, and then I had one watercolor, and it was a watercolor and tinfoil piece, which actually turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would. But my portfolio was 2D. If you send in your portfolio, you choose between 3D, 2D, and drawing. 3D is ceramics, all that fun stuff. I really don't know anything about it. I can't help you there. And then the difference between 2D and drawing is a really fine line. You can kind of just choose one or the other. You want to make sure though that you get it more right than wrong. Your teacher can really help you with that. 2D is more design oriented and then drawing is more like realistic oriented. So. Whatever you feel suits your portfolio best, you can definitely get started on your portfolio and then choose later in the year which one you feel like suits the work that you've done more. How to get a five. Let's talk about that. I can't tell you exactly how to get a five. I'm not part of the college board. I don't know. I don't grade these things. But from what my teacher has said and based off of kind of some of my friends' scores and thinking a little bit about what they did to get that score. I think I have some insight, although definitely don't take everything I say verbatim. I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so first off is your concentrated area. You still might be a little confused as to what it is. So you wanna make sure you have three layers in your concentrated area. Obviously this isn't something you have to have, but I would recommend it. So my initial concentrated area was emotions. Don't make your concentrated area emotions. If you're thinking about it, don't do it. It's like the number one thing not to do. It's so generic. Everyone does it. Don't do it. You're good. You're good if you don't do that. No. Okay. So <laughs> you want to have three layers. So one of them is your like, you know, your overall theme, right? Your overall idea, what you want to convey, whether it be animals or for mine it was like teens in an environment portraits in front of planets okay number two something really important is you want it to evolve you want it to have this timeline it'll also make it easier that was something that my teacher personally recommended um, so for mine my timeline was very literal, like the most literal it could be. It didn't happen on purpose, it was just 1967 to 2017. There you go, <laughs> cut and dry. I don't think it can be more cut and dry with that, but some other examples, someone in my class did endangered animals, and she kind of 
illustrated them, and the more endangered they were, the less of the animal you saw. The girl who did planets. She kind of did the different planets, and then the further away from the sun they were, the more that their head was tilted. Something like that. So I hope that that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what I mean with the timeline. And that third layer, you might just want it to be something that really ties in everything together. So mine was the technology. 1969, it was space technology. 2017, it was people on their iPhones. The 2000s, it was like listening to a boombox. When you do your written part, which really, you're not being graded on your written part, it's just kind of, I don't remember how long it is, it might be like a 250 word essay to explain what your concentrated area is. And just make sure that you do, do a good job explaining your concentrated area tying it into specific pieces. So in mine I said, in picture number one that I have on the college board resembles this here. It's the start of my concentrated area. It has space technology. This is my last piece. This one incorporates this. This one incorporates that. And you just want to mention some of your pieces and how it relates to your concentrated area to really help the judges understand what you made and the idea behind or don't just stick to acrylics. You want to show the judges that you're a well-versed artist and that you know how to work with a bunch of different medias. So for me, I had a, <laughs> had a ton. I had, let's think, I had prismas, oil pastels, acrylic, oil, watercolor, pen, gouache. I had mixed media pieces if you want to count that. I played with unconventional materials like tinfoil and VHS tapes for the background of the self-portrait I showed you. Sorry, that's getting really dark. I did computer art, and I had a batik where I used cold water dye. I think that's everything. I'm not sure. You don't have to have as many as I had, but you just, you want to make sure that you're using, you're not doing the same for everything. Like I said, you don't have to have 24 different medias, obviously, but your breath, if you're doing 12 pieces in your breath, you probably want six different medias. At least if you use the same media for your concentrated area. If you did portraits in your concentrated area, you don't want that many, if any, portraits in your breath section. If you don't do portraits in your concentrated area, you can probably get away with doing like three or four portraits in your breath. So that was something I did personally because I wanted to just do fun little things and I think I have done it. This is another real easy one. Make sure every piece is completed. Good job. Having a developed style definitely helps. I mean, like, you could pull out a piece and say, hey, this piece is Jules's, or this piece is Sandra's, or this piece is Thomas's, and it's kind of unique to you. If you don't have a style, that's okay. Don't sweat it. You'll probably develop a style unknowing that you are. Some things to pay attention to when you're drawing are two things composition and value, it's real easy to just ignore those. <laughs> Compositionally, I don't know if I was the best. If you have interesting compositions, it really steps you up another level. So instead of looking at a guitar straight on, if you're looking from underneath it, or if you're looking at it from an awkward angle that people wouldn't usually look at something, it definitely shows a more mature way of visualizing art. Along with value, make those blacks black and make those whites white and also don't be sloppy with line work. I think that those are the three most important elements with art and don't be lazy with them. Really take them into consideration when you're creating a piece. The last piece of advice I have is making small pieces. Um, <laughs> I did it because we had an art show and I really wanted everything to look nice for the art show. But if your school doesn't have an art show, make small pieces. Oh my god, do it, do it. Make like fucking eight by sixes and just put, make them really detailed, do them in a day. You can make 
lot of small pieces and then you can make a few big ones that are really wow pieces so you can have like 12 little tiny ones and then you can have 12 nice you put all of your energy all of your time into those big pieces that's what i would have done if we didn't have the art show and that's something that you might want to consider if you don't have an art show if your pieces are never going to be seen because the college board does not know how big your pieces are they don't see them only the ones that you send in all right so that was definitely a lot of talking from a girl who doesn't know jack shit but overall you just want a good concentrated area with three different layers to it if you can and you want to use a bunch of different medias don't forget about your composition your value or your line work and then uh make small pieces if you can i think if you have a good concentrated area and you're very creative with your pieces and you have a lot of different medias even if you're not the most skilled technical drawer you can still walk out with a high score that's what I have. Take everything I said with a grain of salt. I, I don't know for sure. I'm not a college board judge, but those are my tips. So those are all things that worked for me. Um, maybe they'll work for you too. Maybe they won't. Who knows? Who knows? Just have fun. Have fun. Do AP art because you love doing art. Alright, have a great day. Enjoy your year.